Alright guys, welcome to a camera comparison between the brand new Google Pixel 3a, Galaxy S10 Plus, and the Huawei P50 Pro. And to be very clear, these are two flagship phones, but the new Google Pixel 3a is, in some ways, so impressive that it actually keeps up. Alright, first things first, standard daytime photography. And you can probably tell that even though the Pixel 3a is less than half the price of the other two phones, it keeps up remarkably. It's using a very similar color processing algorithm to the flagship Pixel 3, and that results in really powerful high dynamic range, even more so than the S10 Plus and the P30 Pro. I do like the shots from the Samsung too. It doesn't darken the shadows as much as the other two phones, but it retains a more natural, but still well exposed image. Okay, so even though the Pixel 3a is capable of some incredible software trickery, sadly, no amount of software is going to be able to replicate having an ultra wide lens. So the S10 Plus and the P30 Pro, as with a lot of flagships that are coming out now, are just going to be able to get wider photos. Also, take note of just how much Huawei increases the contrast in this ultra-wide mode. Anyways, whilst the Pixel 3a cannot use software to simulate having an ultra-wide lens, it can use it to simulate having a telephoto one. So when you zoom in using the Pixel, the phone takes a multitude of shots and then meshes together the detail it gathers from them to get some sort of approximation to what the actual result should be. It's not close to the Huawei P30 Pro, which has five times optical zoom, but it's creeping up on the S10 Plus, which can still do two times optical. If we go all the way to 10 times zoom on this image here, you can see it's behind, but you can also see that it is very respectable. This phone starts at 399 pounds or dollars. Portrait mode on the Samsung and the Huawei works from further away. The Google needs to be closer for it to activate. But when it does, it is a good result. But you can probably tell compared to the other two flagships that the edge detection is a little flakier. As you get even closer, the Pixel gets even better. And you could argue that what it loses in edge detection, it more than makes up for in color reproduction and just that crispiness. When it comes to macro, you'll see that the P30 Pro can get the closest two objects, followed by the S10 Plus, followed by the Pixel. Okay, on to nighttime photography. And this is where things get really juicy. So you probably already know the P30 Pro takes staggering low light photos. We've then got the S10 Plus, and this phone has just had an update which allows you to manually take night mode shots for the first time ever on a Samsung phone. And then the Pixel 3a, which uses the same night sight feature that completely blew us away on the Google Pixel 3. And it is every bit as good here. Even in ultra low light scenarios, it better retains the color and the contrast versus the S10 Plus. It's not as good as the P30 Pro, that device is on a complete other level, but at the same time it is more representative. The Pixel and the Samsung are slightly closer to what the reality actually was. Here's the thing with Google's night sight though, it's not just powerful, it's also really versatile. So you can use it alongside super res zoom, and I was blown away by the results. Also take note of the Huawei right now, that thing is absolutely killing it. So I mentioned that Night Sight is versatile, and one of the areas you can really feel this is when you start taking selfies with it. In one tap, you've got a well-exposed foreground, background, and sky, and it completely blows the other two phones out of the water. Neither of their night modes work on the front cameras. Even in terms of flash quality, I was finding that the Pixel was able to more evenly expose objects. I tried changing what was in front of the camera as well as the position, and that result was pretty consistent. To test the detail, I've taken photos and zoomed in 15 times, and you can see that all three are doing phenomenally. Of the three, I'd side with the Samsung. The clarity of its textures is just a little bit higher. Something the Pixel can do that the other two can't is Top Shot, which allows you after you've taken a photo, say for example if your eyes were closed, to go back and readjust your pose. Kind of amazing. Alright, so before we get into video quality, let's take a quick look at the specs of each phone's camera. The Pixel is pretty simple. You get a single 12.2 megapixel sensor with an aperture of f1.8 and optical image stabilization. The Galaxy S10 on a technical hardware level is more capable. You get the main sensor which has a variable aperture that opens all the way up to f1.5 and the phone combines this with a 2x telephoto lens as well as an ultra wide. And then we've got Huawei, which basically has a very similar setup to the S10 Plus, but then adds a fourth time of flight camera, which should assist in portrait mode. Here we go. All three phones can record in 4K resolution, but the S10 does get one big win in that it can do so at 60 frames per second, twice the frame rate of the other two. You'll notice that even though I have this time set the Huawei P30 Pro to its subtler, smooth color setting, it still definitely oversaturates the image, although you might prefer this. 
As you might be able to tell, Google loses its advantage in high dynamic range that it had with photos, especially compared to the Samsung. It does feel like a lot of Google's features are focused on photography as opposed to videography. As when taking photos, the Pixel still can't simulate an ultrawide, but when you're taking video, unlike with photo, you also lose that powerful zoom technology. This means that if you did want to zoom in while taking video, the Pixel is going to be a fair bit behind the S10, which is in itself a long way behind the P30 Pro. When I tested 4K video stabilization though, the Pixel blew me away. Even though the other two phones are still doing a pretty good job at softening my footsteps on the floor, with the Google Pixel 3a, you can barely even tell there are footsteps. When we lower the resolution to 1080p, this video stabilization on all three phones is taken to the next level. They almost all look like they're on a slider slowly heading towards an object. All three can record slow motion video at 240 frames per second, and the Galaxy S10s is by far the highest quality. But what I was surprised by is that the Pixel was second. Even though it's a more powerful phone, the P30 Pros looks like a mess. In addition to this, the S10 Plus can also shoot super slow motion at 960 frames per second. This outclasses the other two phones by a long margin. If you wanted to film video in the dark, it's going to be very tricky on the Samsung. That phone struggles, in fact, even more than the Google Pixel 3a. Although I did notice that whilst the Samsung wasn't being affected by cars passing by, the Google would always blow out the highlights, then return to being dark again. You might be starting to see a trend here. Whilst the Pixel is very average when it comes to video, in photos, when the phone has got time to process the output to be able to apply color correction, these are the scenarios where Google can transform its pretty average camera hardware into an outstanding result. Such is the case for selfies. Out of the three, I'd say this is the best camera for taking front-facing photos. The phone also now comes by default with a low-level beauty filter. I think it works well, but you can turn it off. And the front-facing portrait mode on this phone is as good, if not better, than the S10+. Plus. P30 Pro is a little overexposed. When it comes to front-facing video, you'll see the same trend again. The Pixel 3a doesn't hold a candle to the two flagship phones. In terms of high dynamic range, it's blowing out the sky, it's even blowing out my face, whereas the other two phones are well controlled. Not to mention, the S10 Plus can record front-facing video at 4K. The other two phones are limited to 1080p. And finally, if for some reason you did want to take front-facing video in really low light, you can, but it's not going to look great on any of these phones. The P30 Pro, though, is notably the weaker of the three. The video is looking super soft on that phone. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, it'd be massively appreciated if you could subscribe to the channel. Plenty more cool stuff coming. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.